Well, good morning, TD community. It is Tuesday, April 28th, and I want to welcome you to today's virtual assembly. And I want to welcome you uh, in the midst of this construction zone and my crazy kids running through to a devotional from Ms. Nibbins. Luke 15, 1 to 7. But at this time, a lot of men and women of doubtful reputation were hanging around Jesus, listening intently. The Pharisees and the religion scholars were not pleased. Not at all pleased. They growled, He takes in sinners and eats meals with them, treating them like old friends. Their grumbling triggered this story. Suppose you had 100 sheep and lost one. Wouldn't you leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the lost one until you found it? When found, you can be sure you would put it across your shoulders, rejoicing, and when you came home, called friends, called in your friends and neighbors, saying, Celebrate with me! I've found my lost sheep! Count on it! There is more joy in heaven over one sinner's rescued life than over 99 good people in no need of rescue. Who's that one person you would do anything for? Uh, when they feel joy, your heart bursts with joy for them. Um, when they are hurting, you feel their pain. I think it's sometimes hard to understand what that kind of love feels like. I know for me it is. Uh, I remember a time, the first time I saw my dad cry, I was in my 20s, uh, it broke me. And, and it still does when I think about it, about that time. On the flip side, I also remember my nephew, he was two at the time, it was Christmas, and he was so excited, and he was just shaking with joy, and my heart actually hurt. I loved him so much, and I still do. I mean, he's in his 20s now, but I still love him a lot. Um, maybe you can't recall an experience like that, and that's okay. I mean, I have 30 plus years of experience on you to draw from, but we have a God who feels that way all the time. He loves us unconditionally, his heart breaks with sorrow and bursts with joy with us. Even when we don't think he's there. He died on the cross. He went to hell. He paid for our sins. What? I feel like that Jeff peanut butter guy. What? Right? He died on the cross. He went to hell. He paid for our sins. What? does that? Who loves you so deeply? Jesus does. He loves you. He loves you so much that he is completely unconcerned with the consequences of his actions. When it comes to loving you, we shout out, we shout at him, we yell at him, we say we hate him, we fall down, we cry why so many times. We can't understand all the things of this world. We, we can feel the pain. We can sometimes have the joy. But Jesus is there with us all the time, recklessly during the times of joy, but so much more during the times of pain. Corey Ashbury had a song that came out a few years ago where he talks about the reckless love of God. But he's not talking about recklessness like we think about it in terms of foolish or dangerous. Kind of, actually. He says... He says this, Our God loves us so recklessly that he would leave the 99 sheep in search of us, the one lost sheep. God's love isn't selfish or self-serving. He doesn't wonder what he will gain or lose by loving us. He simply puts himself out there in the hope that we will look back and return that love to him. He will leave the 99 for the one for you every time. For many of us, that's just ridiculous. What if he loses the other 99 when he's looking for the one? Who does that? But he gives his heart so completely, again and again, and we break his heart over and over and over, and yet he returns with love again and again. Who does that? Nobody. Nobody but Jesus. You might feel far away from him today, for the past year, for a while, okay? But turn around. He's there holding out his hand to you to heal that broken heart, to share in your joy. And if you can't do it today, that's okay, because he'll be there again tomorrow holding out his hand. And the day after that, and the day after that, 
recklessly. He is always coming after you and me. Thanks, uh, Miss Divots, for those devotions. It's one of my favorite songs and one of my favorite Bible stories as well. So again, really appreciate you bringing that to us. We are going to move on to the next part of the assembly, and we've got a cool couple segments coming up. The first thing that we are going to watch is a second edition of a segment that we started last week, I believe. So without further ado, we are going to check out Mr. Freeman. You're watching Ebola. Quarantine edition. Where Mr. Freeman tries to get us to grow plants inside. We are planting potatoes here using a potato that started to grow out. This is called a seed potato. Uh, and each of the eyes has the potential of becoming a plant. A potato is not actually a root. Uh, it's a lateral stem uh, that swells up and has lots of the uh, glucose that's here. It's what's give that high starch value. But each of these, because it's a stem, has the potential to become a new stem. And then every small little green piece here will actually become a leaf uh, on or a stem and a leaf on the new potato plant. We're trying a new experiment down here of growing potatoes in an IKEA bag. Uh, the idea being that uh, if we grow them in kind of a traditional garden soil, uh, it doesn't get as deep as it needs to be. Potatoes do best in a sandier soil, uh, but also as these small little stems grow up, uh, new potatoes will form on them. So if we just have it at a normal depth, we're only going to get potatoes at this level. But as the green comes up, we'll slowly put more dirt over the stem as it continues up. And then eventually this whole bag will be filled with dirt uh, and there'll be lots of new baby potatoes growing there. And hopefully the potato stems, flowers and leaves will be able to all kind of spill over the bag. So at this point, we're just going to put on a very small amount of soil just to cover them up. We'll add a little bit of water uh, to let them begin to grow. Spread this around a little bit to evenly distribute it. And we might have to put a lid on it initially to try to keep raccoons or squirrels out of here. And that's everything. Hopefully we'll be having potatoes in a couple of months. Thanks, Mr. Freeman. I am inspired to go plant my own potatoes. Well, thanks, Mr. Freeman. Unfortunately, I don't have any potatoes, but I have this plant and I have this ground, so I'm just gonna... That should do it. Anyways, let's move on. We're gonna head into the kitchen with Miss Contos and then check out another trick shot from one of our students. Hey everyone, and welcome to the first installment of Cooking with Contos. Today we are going to cook some healthy banana bread that I'm gonna walk you through, but first we're gonna wash our hands. All right, so by now, some of you are probably getting pretty bored sitting at home and maybe you're getting hungry, like I've been getting. Um, there's a lot of different snacks that you can have, so on this edition of Cooking with Contos, we're gonna cook a healthy snack that you can eat while you're studying or while you're doing your work during the day. So the first thing we need to do is preheat the oven to 350, which I've already done, and we're gonna start adding the ingredients. I'm gonna start out by putting two eggs into a large bowl and a whisking bowl. And then we are going to add in the bananas. 
One of the things that makes this recipe a little bit healthier is that we're not using any refined sugar. We're using maple syrup instead, and we are also adding in Greek yogurt. So we're adding about half a cup of Greek yogurt. And we have about six tablespoons of maple syrup here, which we're gonna use instead of white sugar. And then we're gonna add in our vanilla. Add a teaspoon of that. And we're gonna mix it. So it's pretty smooth. And then we're gonna add in our dry ingredients. So we have um, three quarter cups of oats and just put those in there. And um, we have about a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Just gonna throw those in as well. And we're gonna mix that together before adding flour. So we're gonna add in our flour last. And then if you want, you can add in dried fruit or nuts if you'd like. I'm gonna add in about half a cup of um, chopped almonds and cashews. And I'm gonna mix those in at the same time as I mix in the flour. and now we wait and it is ready so now we just need to let that sit for about 10 minutes before we can take it out of the pan all right so we've removed the banana bread from the pan it is ready to go and i hope that you enjoyed this first segment of cooking with contos see you next time it doesn't actually taste that good. Thank you to Miss Contos and to the Lewis family for that. As you can see, while you were gone, my plants have really taken off. So once again, just uh, really inspired by Mr. Freeman's segment there. And uh, I hope you are too. Go outside and plant some plants. Just make sure that your neighbor knows if you steal them from his house. Anyways, that's it for the assembly today. Hope you have a great day. Grade 12s, make sure you check into the grad breakfast during period one and for the rest of you, we'll see you tomorrow.